Hello, and welcome to all those joining today's ISPOR educational webinar. Before we move on to the webinar, I wanted to briefly share the benefits associated with ISPOR membership and invite you to join. ISPOR membership benefits include access to publications, knowledge products and tools, educational training programs, career development, and more. For more information, visit our website at www.ispor.org. Today's webinar is entitled French Administrative Healthcare Database, Strengths, Limitations, and Perspectives for the Largest, Richest, Real World Database in the EU, and is brought to you by Sertara. And now I will pass it over to our moderator, Billy Hemsall, Senior Vice President, Evidence, Value, and Access for Sertara. Welcome, Dr. Hemsall. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very happy to speak uh, today about the, uh, the French administrative healthcare database called SNDS. This is a French acronym. And uh, today to speak about uh, <clears throat> this important and very rich data source, real world data source, um, we will uh, we'll hear uh, from uh, Professor Emmanuel Bacri, who is the CSO of uh, the Health Data Hub in charge of managing and developing this, uh, this important database. But uh, Professor Bakri is also a, a senior researcher at uh, CNRS and CRMAD, uh, to an uh, important data analytics research center in France, in Paris. And uh, he's heading also the health data projects at Ecole Polytechnique. Um, my colleague uh, Samit Bakshi will also um, uh, talk about uh, real world uh, data usage, especially in the um, uh, in, in the in industry and, and medical research applications. He's v VP of Real World Data Solutions in Sartara. Myself, I will conclude, uh, I will also um, uh, conclude the discussions, the presentations and discuss some case studies. Next slide. You can see here the agenda. We'll start with Professor Bakri uh, giving us an overview of the SNDS as a real world data resource. The current uh, key working practices, but also some uh, perspectives within the health data hub development and the, the, the opportunities for, for researchers and industry players. Then uh, my colleague Sumit will uh, discuss the similarities and differences between this SNDS data source and other claims database in the world. Then myself, uh, I will go uh, through a, a few use cases, a few case studies, to highlight strengths and opportunities that are already currently uh, accessible in the SNDS. And we'll conclude with, with some key uh, perspectives moving forward. Next slide. Over to you, Professor Bakrin. Yes, hello. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to this uh, conference. So I will be talking about SNDS now. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, very rich and very different databases, health databases in France. But we have one that we are particularly proud of, which is the, the so-called SNDS, which is really a French specificity, I think. Uh, or I should say the old SNDS, because as you will see uh, uh, at the end of my talk, you will see that now SNDS is even larger than that. But I will focus first on what usually people call SNDS, which is this database I was talking about, I was mentioning. So it's a claim database, medical administrative, it's a database, an accountant database. So basically whenever uh, somebody uh, uh, gets some care. If and if you get some uh, reimbursement, then the reimbursement, the the, the the footprint of the reimbursement is in the, the is stored in the database. Since uh, we are very lucky in France, because uh, basically we are uh, uh, partially reimbursing the government is partially reimbursing uh, almost all healthcare to everybody. So that's what makes this database very unique because basically includes everybody and a footprint of all the health cares. But uh, uh, let me be clear, it doesn't have, it doesn't include any uh, clinical uh, data, okay? Just uh, uh, administrative, medical administrative data. But, but as I said, since we're reimbursing partially everything, basically you can see uh, all the, you can see a footprint of all the medical acts uh, uh, of a given, uh, for a given person. So, uh, the SNDS is a collection of several uh, databases, 
uh, more than three, but here I named just the, the main three ones. The, so the very big one is this DCIR. So this is the, the reimbursement uh, uh, database. So it covers uh, six or more than 65 million uh, uh, people. Uh, then you have, it's, it's very important, but it's smaller in terms of size, uh, the PMSI. Which is uh, uh, which gives you uh, details about the, the health cares when the, the person enters the, the hospital, okay. But again, there is no clinical data, okay. It's just there there will be a code for the disease and stuff like that. But there is no, and and we would know if, for instance, there is an X-ray exam or stuff like that. But we don't have the X-rays. We don't have the, the results of the test and so on. And then we have this very small database, but which is very important, which is a database of the causes of death. Uh, and of course, all these databases are linked. Uh, so what makes this database so special is that it covers more than 65 million people. And so, so in that sense, it is, it is almost not biased. Okay, if you look at the, the biggest, no, sorry, not next, I'm still here. I'm sorry. Uh, if you are, if you are comparing to like the biggest uh, U.S. Uh, claims databases, it would cover I don't know ten or twenty million people. But basically, it, it they are they are taken care of by private uh, uh, companies, and basically the people inside the database are like rich, young, and healthy people. So it's a very they are very biased uh, database. This one is not as, or very very hardly biased, I would say. So this is uh, what makes it so special. It is big, more than 200 terabytes. Uh, you can see the figures uh, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the slide, 11 million hospital stays, 1.2 billion treatment claim, and, and so on. So next slide. Next. Please, next slide. Hello, oh, thank you, okay. So now can you go back? So what can we do? Yeah, let me give you examples of what ha people have been doing with the database. Of course, it has a, a, a very strong potential impact on healthcare. So here I, I'm, I'm just uh, mentioning one application which is very important, which is pharmacovigilance. So trying to detect, uh, trying to identify medications that are on the market and that are uh, that have uh, adversarial uh, uh, secondary effects. So, for instance, uh, in 2013, it was proved that, that there was a link between third-generation pills and the risk of pulmonary embolism. In 2015, it's from this database that the, the, the mediator was really uh, uh, clearly identified as a really uh, bad medication with a potential death for the person. But what is maybe not that uh, clear for everybody is that the impact, so the potential impact is not just on healthcare, but of course on the economy. In France, public health is the first uh, budget with, I think, 260 uh, uh, euros, billion euros every year. So, for instance, I'm sorry, but on the right side, it's in French. But in 2014, there was this cartography of the 54 main pathologies that was done database so that you can see the number of people, the, the, the cost of each, pathology, of each pathology and so on. These are very important uh, work, of course. Uh, and, and a lot of people are working, I know it's very hard, but, but it's a very important subject of research on trying to optimize uh, healthcare pathways for a given pathology. So, for instance, uh, if you take uh, all people the, that are uh, that have uh, that are diabetic people of type two, that's more than three million, I think, in France. If you look at all the pathways in the SNDS, and if you are if you were able to do clustering of these pathways, which is very hard. I mean, a lot of people. I am working with my team on that, and a lot of AI researchers are working on that kind of stuff uh, in the world, but uh, nobody succeeded yet. But if we were able to do some clustering of pathways, then you would be able to identify um, uh, typical pathways. And that, then that's a win-win situation because then you can say which ones are, the, are, are carrying the, the best and which, which one are costing the, the least. Okay, So these are very, very optimizing uh, 
the, the healthcare pathways, not only for healthcare, but of course for healthcare, but also for economy. This is a very, very important uh, uh, research topic. There are many more, of course, research topics, but I just named uh, these two ones. Next slide, please. Sorry, can I have the next slide? Thank you. Now, I would like to talk about very quickly about accessing not only SNDS, you'll see why, but in, uh, accessing health database in France. Until now, tr trying to get access to health data in France has raised many difficulties. I'm not talking about SNDS again, but you'll see why for those who wish to use them in projects of public interest. And there are three main reasons why this is difficult. The first one is that the data are scattered among multiple databases uh, that people don't know, not very easy to understand by outsiders and so on. Second point, the governance and procedures for accessing health data is extremely complex. And especially because of the sensitivity of these data. And they are governed by different, sometimes discretionary rules. So if you want to get access to two different databases and then and have them chained together, joined together, you would have to follow the first governance for the first database, the one for the second one, and ask for a join. You could wait for easily for two or three years. And at the end, uh, the databases in France are lacking interoperability. So they are not normalized in terms of the format, which is not the same and so on. So it's very hard to discuss, to, to make them talk together. That's why uh, there was a, a decision from the government to, to create the health data hub. So that's the next slide. That's to answer this kind of uh, uh, problems. So now I will be talking about the health data hub. So the health data hub, has been uh, uh, created by a law that was voted in July 2019, Article 41, as you see on the, on the right. And the law basically, I'm going to make it simple, says three things. So you see it on the, on the left side. That's the first point. So first point, the Health Data Hub will become, sh shall become the unique portal access of the SNDS for public interest research. Okay, so if you want to access the SNDS, you have to apply to the hub. So that's not a very big, uh, 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 that's not a very uh, big uh, change uh, up to now. Now we go to the next slide and you will see that now that's the big change and that makes the first point very different. Second point of the law, SNDS has been extended. It has been extended to incorporate all data from partially reimbursed healthcare by the French healthcare system. Okay, so this is extremely important. It means that the SNDS I was talking about at the beginning is, should be now called the main basis of the SNDS system. But today with this law, basically the SNDS includes all the data that are partially, that are issued from CARES uh, that are partially reimbursed uh, by the French uh, government. And as I told you, since we are, we are very lucky in France because we are basically partially reimbursing everything. So that basically means that SNDS today, as long as the law uh, is, uh, as long as we are interested in the law, SNDS today is basically, includes basically all the French health data. Okay, so now the first point that the law said, that claimed, well, that the hub should be the main gateway to the SNDS, that, then that makes it totally different, okay? It means that the hub long-term shall be this, the only, the unique gateway to all the French health data, okay? So that's, that's really a, a very, um, a very uh, uh, high level, I mean, very hard to reach a point, but I will tell you later how we, we start uh, practical uh, and how we, we function. So the next uh, slide will, is uh, stating the third point of the, the law. So the third point is that Health Data Hub will implement a unified governance for public interest researchers seeking to access SNDS, so the, the whole French health data, okay? only for public interest researchers, okay? So that means 
and and that is uh, already done so that means uh, there there will be a unique governance so now hopefully when we will do all that when we we will make all these true all these points hopefully you will have just a single governance to access uh, and to join several databases so that make that will make things uh, much simpler next slide please so what happened since so just two key uh, dates in november uh, 2019 the institution the health data hub was created uh, it replaces the, the structure which was called institut national de santé inds okay and of course expanding its missions as as we just uh, said and in december 2019 uh, there was a uh, uh, first version of the techno technological platform the health data hub that was certified by the government instances. And last thing but not least, we have a budget of six, 76 million euros for the first four years uh, of the health that I have. So as you understood the, the, the three points of the law, this is really a very, very big project and very tough to realize. So uh, we are facing a lot of different challenges. So I would like to just name three of them and, and go into details of three of them. The first one is that we have to consolidate massive and heterogeneous data on a single modern infrastructure. Massive because we're talking about, of course, the medical administrative database, the old or the principal, the, the, the main database of the SNDS that we should call today like that. But also public and private hospitals data, uh, town uh, 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 medicine data in some cohorts, private and many, many more. Okay, so massive data and very heterogeneous since we have claims, genomics, medical imaging, biological analysis, survey data, and so on. So, of course, we're not going to become uh, from one day to another the main gateway to all French health data uh, in France. So that, that, that would be totally crazy, that's totally impossible. So, how do we function? So we are going to publish a catalog of databases. Of course, that will be including the main basis of the SNDS, the Musical Administrative, okay? And basically these are the databases the, the, that people will be able to access through this uh, new governance, okay? So we have been working with data producers to enroll them in the project and to understand, to work with them for the valorization of their work. And we put their data into the catalog and the catalog, of course, will expand progressively every year. Okay, but very soon we are going to publish this catalog of about 10 or 12 databases to start with. And one point which is very important, we will have, we will uh, uh, store only pseudonymized data on the platform they have that help. Okay, we are not allowed to have direct, directly identifying, identifying data. Not anonymized, of course, because you need to have individual data, but pseudonymized. So we don't have the name, we don't have the, the ID number of the person or, or stuff like that. Next slide. So the second uh, challenge I would like to talk about is about uh, the fact that we, we have to be able to share data to all the people who want to do public interest uh, uh, projects, to, to conduct public interest projects, okay, to, that can be uh, public uh, entities or private entities. And of course, make uh, everything so that uh, the, the research is, is at least easy to, to, to proceed. So that means we have very, very high level security constraints on the platform. Uh, so you will, uh, when, when you access the data, you will do it remotely from your laptop or from your computer, but you will not be allowed to take the data out. So you will have a securized uh, bubble in, on the platform. Okay, and you are not allowed to take anything out. And of course, there will be a lot of security to, to forbid you to do so. We have modern uh, API, uh, uh, cutting edge infrastructures, modern tools and frameworks, uh, and so on. Okay, now 
in order to share the data, in order to allow these uh, projects, we, we set up a, a unified governance. So how does it work? Basically, if you want to access some data out of the catalog, you have to, to, to send a project to the gateway, so that's the Health Data Hub. The Health Data Hub gives it to an independent committee, which is called the CESRES, Scientific and Ethical Committee, that will give a, a, that will write a report and, and, and say if it's okay for them or not. Then it will pass the, the, the papers to the CNIL, which is the National Commission for Data Protection Liberties, and the CNIL will give author authorization or not to launch the project. If, it's, if the authorization is given, then uh, the, the Health Data Hub uh, will provide a, a project space into, in the platform. That's how it works. Next slide. So we have also a challenge about animation of the health data ecosystem. We have the mission to become a major actor in the health data ecosystem, become a reference platform for matching skills and interests. It already started. A lot of people are coming to see us to be matched, like private companies are looking for researchers and so on. So we are doing the matching promoting innovation and of course bring national and international visibility. The data can be accessed from foreign countries. That's very important. Next slide. So from a practical point of view, as I told you, we are going to publish a catalog. So that should be published by the end of the year with more than 50, 10, let's say 15 databases with very various data. So of course you'll have the historical SNDS I was telling you about at the beginning of the talk, but also clinical data, registers, cohort, and so on and so on. Next slide. We have pilot projects because we, uh, we wanted to start with something with, uh, even if we didn't have the right at the very beginning to, to open the gateway, the gateway should, shall be open in uh, September. Uh, but we have more than 30, pilot projects that we started before. Uh, we have, we made two calls for projects, one in 2019 and one in 2020. We have a lot of COVID-19 projects. Uh, the projects are, 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 are proposed by universities, research centers, hospital startups, and, and many more uh, kind of uh, 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 institutions. And as I told you, the, the, we are waiting uh, for, uh, this decree to be published, it would be in October 2020 to open the gateway officially. Next slide. So I'll be, I'm, I'm over in uh, two minutes. No, yeah. So these are examples of projects for the first of the first call of projects. All of them come with really beautiful uh, databases. Like you can see the third line, 250,000 annotated mammographies, all the the emergency uh, uh, services uh, databases. The first one is a, a project uh, that was brought by a startup. They are following more than 8,000 pacemakers real time and they want to join it with the SNDS database, the, old, the, the main basis of the SNDS, because they want to predict from the pacemakers data if there was a, a complication, a cardiac complication. In order to have uh, this information, they need the SNDS. Okay, so they want the link and they want to train AI on that. Next slide, give you some uh, selection of projects of the second call. And again, a lot of very, very various projects. Uh, CEDAR is a collaboration between a startup and uh, uh, Fondation Rothschild the Hospital with a lot of uh, uh, eye images. Uh, and we have also dermatology, we have a lot of stuff. Next slide, and that will be uh, my, thank you. Uh, about the animation of the ecosystem, as I told you, we're matching skills and uh, interests. So we have more than 170 affiliated members, researchers, that were able to match with uh, demand. We are uh, organizing an AI for Health Winter School that will be from the 4th to the 8th of January. It will be virtual, but you will have three days of plenary uh, lectures and then two days of practical sessions uh, uh, so you'll choose between two themes, okay? And we have really renowned uh, plenary speakers from all over the world. And last slide, please. Thank you. We have launched uh, our first data challenge with the French Society of Pathology, so it's opened. 
with a price of 20,000, 25,000 euros, I think, to, to win. And uh, last but not least, of course, we want to, to we keep connected to all European initiatives that, are, that look alike or that already exist. And uh, so we are representing France at the joint action on the European health data space. Uh, and this is, of course, very important for us because we, are, we don't want to do this project just alone in, in France, but we want to be connected to all the other projects, similar projects, so that we could work ideally with our exchange, not maybe exchange, but have people being able to work on several databases from, from different countries in, in, the, in Europe. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bakri. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for the uh, for the introduction to to the SNDS. That sets the tone uh, for the next sections, which is uh, you know getting getting an understanding of how does the SNDS compare with with some other databases that are available, uh, and and you know uh, thereby highlighting some of the strengths and limitations of. Of, of the database, as well as you know, later on going through the strengths. Billy, with Billy, we can go into the strengths and opportunities uh, with the case studies. So, yeah. So, uh, generally speaking, you know, when we when we talk about real world data in Europe, uh, we have to ask ourselves: Is the data that we that we need for our project or for our research is it available? Uh, is the available data easily accessible? Or is the access restricted in some way? Or is the and and is the available and accessible data appropriate for my research needs? Now these are critical questions to answer uh, because you know there are I mean there are many rich data sources available in in the EU uh, generally data sources such as CPRD or or uh, you know uh, the hospital episode statistics in the UK or or the the, the Nordic registers. Uh, some of these databases are very, very strong databases and, and, and very well published databases. Uh, but you know, they may have their limitations when it comes to certain types of research. So it's, it's very critical to ask these questions. And, and when, we, uh, when we pose these questions uh, for, for many databases, you know, there, are, there are many key challenges that come up with, especially with administrative key, uh, claims data. Uh, things such as, size representativeness and generalizability uh, whether whether the database uh, you know covers just inpatient or ambulatory care or or just primary care or secondary care or tertiary care what kind of care care uh, uh, setting does the does the database cover uh, what kind of information about these patients baseline information such as demographics is available in these databases uh, are there clinical outcomes that can be uh, that can be had from the database uh, what kind of coding systems does the database use and and thereby you know what uh, what could be the potential coding issues uh, be it in terms of user inputs incentives to enter the data and so on uh, whether the data provides uh, you know reimbursed claims or, or actual health resource use. There, there can be a difference between the two. Uh, whether whether you know, the, the database contains complete data on mortality, uh, what is the longitudinality of the data? And if, if necessary, you know, what kind of linkages can be established? Now, these are some of the challenges that, that, uh, that are there with most administrative claims databases. Now, to delve into... Uh, maybe one such challenge in, in detail, uh, or one or a couple of such challenges in detail. Uh, let's see, you know, in terms of uh, size, uh, how does it, how does the SNDS compare or, or you know, what, what could be the challenges that one faces with different types of claims databases and, and how does the SNDS compare there? So, you know, as, as far as the SNDS is concerned, it includes, you know, the, the the entire French population, uh, as Dr. Bakri pointed out, uh, and and you know uh, when we look at when we compare it to uh, say some of the large claims databases uh, uh, that that are uh, you know that are that are available in the U.S., some of them contain you know 
much higher. Uh, uh, I mean, in size, they are they are much larger than the SNDs. But you know, can we have an active population over a period of time? Uh, maybe not. So, for example, in in a large claims database in the US. Uh, the, 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 there is a lot of churn on the population. There is a lot of attrition on the population based on, uh, you know, people changing health plans. And over a period of 10 years, there is considerable loss that we see, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in the, in the uh, longitudinality of the database. So, you know, as we, as we expand the timeline, uh, or, or the time frame of, of uh, research, uh, the the number of uh, patients that we uh, that we might the, the size of the population that we might see uh, drops down drastically uh, over time. Now there there are other issues such as representativeness and generalizability, and you know in in with the, with the uh, with with claims databases especially uh, population populations that are covered they may bring inherent biases you know uh, insured versus uninsured as as dr bakri pointed out you know there are uh, it, it's 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 a it's a question of the well off versus uh, versus the not so well off people who can afford insurance versus versus the others uh, now this can be this can be you know managed in some ways for example in the us by including a proportion of 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 medicare and medicaid patients uh, but you know it it's not a perfect solution uh, then you know uh, there are issues uh, when it comes to uh, you know insured populations of of uh, issues such as you know the healthy worker effect and this can be seen in in a lot of employer based insurance schemes uh, where you know uh, it's only the employed people who get insured uh, and and you know that leads to a a healthy worker effect that does not represent the 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 rest of the population uh, there are you know there are many other issues one can get into such as geographic coverage and so on uh, and and you know but some of in in many of these cases depending on the nature of the database and the biases it may not be possible to weight the results in order to generalize so we 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 end up with i mean we, we end up with analyzing data that's available large data that's available but maybe not generalizable and you know this issue becomes even more pertinent when when we deal with smaller cohort definitions for example you know rare diseases or outcomes so let's let's just go through very quickly uh, you know some of the key challenges with with most administrative claims databases and how does the sndas compare with those uh, so in terms of size representativeness and generalizability it's a national data set it's a truly national data set it's a large data set uh, you know uh, of of 65 million people uh, so it is it is generalizable to to france uh, it is representative to france and and a large one uh there is you know there is there is no uh, bias in terms of where the data is coming from whether it's coming from primary care secondary care uh, the the data from primary secondary care is all linked up within the SNDS uh, within the databases the different connected databases uh, that dr bactri pointed out there are certain demographic details uh, such as race smoking status that uh, uh, you know that that may be available uh, depending on whether the patient has uh, has has declared such things uh, at at the time of registration uh, there is no clinical data as as dr bakri pointed out but there can be algorithms that can be developed and you know as as he presented the plan uh, you know there is a possibility of making linkages with registries or or cohorts uh, you know and 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 the french health data hub is is uh, seemingly working towards that uh, there are i mean there could be coding issues and there are certain uh, uh you know codes that are that are unique to the french uh, health system uh, such as the ald uh, and, and and you know there are uh, th those kind of issues will will still remain uh, but one good thing is that the incentives uh, for 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 user input are similar across the country which makes it you know uh, more or less a national uh, uniform implementation of how these codes are implemented rather than you know uh, a heterogeneous implementation uh, 
reimburse claims uh, can actually be, uh, I mean, one can get to uh, the actual health resource use, although, you know, uh, uh, when, when Dr. Bakri presented, he, he pointed out that it's, it's partial reimbursement that is captured, uh, but it's, it's all the health resource use that is captured. So a proportion of that health resource use gets paid out by the, by the insurance system, uh, but it's the actual health resource use that, that gets captured. Uh, mortality and cause of death are, are, are very robustly uh, linked. And at, at the moment, uh, uh, 10 years worth of data can be, can be released uh, for, for research. And there are direct linkages with, with EHR and, and registries possible, as Dr. Bakri pointed out. So coming to uh, the, uh, the conclusion on, on the key strengths of the database, uh, the SNDS is a large database uh, and, and, and you know, there, are, there are few limitations and restrictions, uh, even when it comes to study of rare diseases and populations or rare outcomes uh, uh, of, of uh, either adverse events or rare disease outcomes. So it, it, it still provides a, a large enough sample size, a good enough sample size for, for most kind of research. Uh, it is a representative and generalizable database. Uh, and, and uh, you know, with the with the with the exception of maybe the Scandinavian databases, which can claim to be as representative and 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 uh, generalizable, uh, you know there there are very few databases that one can think of uh, that are as as uh, you know uh, that represent the population of a country as much. Uh, the the follow up time, uh, you know. Uh, in, in many databases, we've, we've talked about the attrition uh, due to people changing health plans, uh, which is which is uh, not uh, not 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 there with the SNDS. Uh, the only two reasons why a person would drop off from the database would be due to mortality, which is again captured, and immigration. Uh, which is when the patient leaves the country. Uh, the access to the database is, uh, you know, as, as Dr. Bakri pointed out, was a was difficult, but you know there are there are specific norms that are laid down, and and uh, you know the access is becoming uh, 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 codified as well. Um, and, and of course, there, there, there are potential linkages to, to data, uh, uh, to other registries. Uh, whereas, you know, most other claims databases typically use probabilistic data linkage with, with, uh, with a variable degree of certainty. So that's where I will, uh, I will hand over to, uh, to Billy Amzel, uh, who, will, who will take us through some case studies to highlight some of these trends. Thank you, Samit. Next slide, please. So yes, I, I will uh, uh, walk through you through a, a, a few case studies. Uh, the case studies I'm presenting here are based on the SNDS, so they are they have been you know worked out in the in the past few years. So I'm not talking yet about the H, 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 HDH perspectives, but focusing on on the current SNDS. The first one is is about clinical and economic burden of a rare disease uh, transfusion dependent beta thalassemia in France. So clinical and economic burden is, is a typical ob research objective for HOR researchers. <clears throat> and the, uh, the French uh, SNDS is, is very well suited for this kind of research, especially and including for rare diseases where it's typically very difficult to, to, to find representative data, large enough data or, or data with enough follow-up time to, uh, to understand the consequences to really well capture the long-term uh, uh, clinical and, and, and economic burdens. So in, the, in this case, I'm just uh, representing the, the flow chart to just illustrate the, the type of numbers that we are getting on this uh, indication, um, laying down the different inclusion criteria as you would do. Here you, you see that it's not only beta thalassemia patients that we are focusing on, but next slide, on, on this um, uh, specific uh, transfusion dependent subpopulation. So there was no diagnosis codes or no um, 
uh, you know, uh, easy identifiers for, for such uh, uh, subgroup of patients. So we had to, of course, in involve clinical experts to, uh, to, to uh, build up an, an algorithm that, may, that would be uh, sensitive and specific enough to identify those patients. In this case, it was patients with at least eight episodes of blood transfusion per, per 12 months. And this is how we ended up with 448 uh, prevalent patients in the database. Um, is this number uh, represent, representative um, of, of the, the actual population? So we had, in this specific case, we had a chance to, uh, to, uh, to access a very good and, and ex extensive re national registry of, of, of beta thalassemia patients in France. And you can see that basically we were capturing most of the major form uh, of, of these um, transfusion dependent beta thalassemia patient, patients as you could see uh, comparing the numbers on similar time periods. So that's one illustration that we have performed a number of other similar or sometimes even stronger uh, validation uh, exercise with comparing what, what you get in terms of population with the SNDS versus an, an exhaustive uh, national registry, especially for rare diseases. And we had so far very good match as long as the algorithm, of course, of, of identification and, and the, the process of collecting the patients is, is robust. Next slide, please. Second uh, example I wanted to uh, touch upon is uh, for real world, uh, real world studies, real world studies, long-term real world studies. So when you are looking at long-term outcomes, that's typical for uh, chronic diseases, for example, where you want to uh, capture the disease trajectory the patient trajectory over, over long enough, over years, five years, 10 years. So again, um, you, you need to have um, sufficient representativeness, but also uh, sufficient follow-up follow time to, uh, to handle this, this kind of, of, of research. Here I'm presenting uh, an adherence and treatment in intensity uh, uh, approach for uh, lipid lowering therapies in patients with a history of myocardial infarction in France. <clears throat> so it's a subgroup of, <clears throat> of um, uh, patients with previous MI that we want to, uh, to, uh, to follow and, and we want to analyze how exposure, how um, real world exposure to their treatment is affecting their outcomes over time. Um, so uh, for this purpose, again, you need to, to be able to, to quantify uh, the, the exposure and the, the real world outcomes over a long time enough. Next slide. <clears throat> so here you are looking, you want to be uh, robust on, on both directions. One, one uh, uh, you want to be able to, uh, to capture the outcomes, of course. So here the cardiovascular outcomes, which can be rare by definition. So the severe outcomes such as severe hospitalization or death. And second, you want to capture the dynamic exposure in the real world, which is um, at this scale, not always easy to, to, uh, to capture, meaning the adherence to, uh, to treatment and the, the treatment intensity, which is defined here uh, based on, on, the, on the, uh, the guidelines in, in, in force or in use in France, which was allowing us to, uh, to define the expected uh, reduction in low density uh, LDLC. And, and, and therefore, we are able to, to define the, the expected uh, treatment intensity so that we would be able to define the, ad the adherence based on prescriptions and, and, and days covered and the, the treatment intensity that you would expect. Next slide. Now, combining outcomes and exposure in the real world, we were able to you know, see how uh, exposure was uh, affecting outcome and here how adherence times intensity was really uh, uh, affecting um, cardiovascular events rates for different subgroups of, of patients. So that's the kind of real world effectiveness studies. So one step beyond the HOR uh, types of study that we could conduct uh, in, in, a, in a given chronic uh, disease. Next slide. Maybe to finish uh, one other example, just to illustrate how the data linkage can also give another dimension to the research. This is just an example that was, um, I think uh, Professor Bakri was uh, mentioning it in his uh, pilot project for the HTH. Basically, uh, 
uh, on, on the development of tr treatment selection algorithm through a registry linkage in, uh, in, in, uh, in Sarcoma in France. So here, the, the strength here is to, uh, to, um, to be able to linkage the big data SNDS with deeper data from a, a, a very, uh, very uh, um, exhaustive registry in sarcoma cases with confirmed uh, diagnosis, a way to combine very specific data with large and representative data source. So that's very, uh, a very strong uh, data source where, next slide, uh, I think research is ongoing, but yeah, you can consider now, uh, so you can link treatment patterns and survival data in the long term and allowing you for a number of, of uh, you know, a very uh, critical uh, medical research in the long term, you can uh, data mine the sequence, so se uh, do some uh, sequence mining for, uh, to identify optimal treatment pathway in the long term. You can perform some disease-wide modeling uh, over lifetime, basically, or disease time to, uh, to, to support, uh, to enhance the, the personalized medicine approach or precision care. And you could uh, also uh, envision, of course, uh, updating guidelines and guide uh, both research and practice in the real world. Next slide. So that's it for the use cases. A few um, summary, a small summary of the potential use cases um, in perspective of this uh, uh, upcoming HDH, HDH. So uh, in medical research, uh, obviously, um, uh, this, as I was illustrating with the last example, um, there is, you know, uh, it provides a, a very rich data source to inform on the natural history, the na long-term natural history of diseases um, for care uh, and, and patient support. You can also imagine uh, um, uh, uh, going towards connected care that could allow for more personalized or more precision care um, through, um, at, at the national level uh, through uh, connected devices, for example. Then of course for HCPs, um, this would translate also in, in decision support tool on, at the point of care or at the guidelines level to inform and optimize a guide, guidelines based on projects like I was just illustrating uh, before. Next slide. Just to finish this, uh, the presentation, I would conclude uh, about this, um, this strong advantage, this strong uh, um, value uh, for uh, this uh, SNDS, so which is basically the l largest uh, and potentially the most uh, comprehensive data, real world data resource in Europe. Um, there, are, there are great perspectives moving forward with this uh, HDH in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of care, research, and in terms of, of um, patient management. And, uh, but already now with the, the current SNDS, we see that we can still um, use the, this rich database for very robust and generalizable research on, on many diseases, not only rare diseases, but of course, including rare and, and chronic diseases with very long-term and very, uh, very uh, representative follow-up time. So um, I think that's, uh, uh, a great opportunity for uh, researchers around the world to uh, to uh, uh, use this uh, this data source, and I'm very happy to um, uh, to to gain your to to get uh, any any questions from from the audience on on this uh, on this topic. Thank you very much for your attention. So I think we have uh, a number of questions that were. Um, that were raised, uh, some were answered on, on the on the Q and Q and A uh, window. Um, maybe I can uh, raise one question on um, uh, yeah, there was a question about the the, the variables included included in the, uh, the the demographics that were included in the SNDS uh, database. Uh, so, um, of course, the, currently the, uh, the main demographics like uh, age, sex, and, and location may be accessible, but smoking status or ethnicity are not captured. Uh, 
that's uh, uh, one, one, uh, one question that was raised a, a couple of times, I think. One question maybe for, uh, for uh, you, uh, uh, Professor Bakri, or, or maybe from, for Samit, do you anticipate that other EU countries will follow the French lead in making health information available for research? Any perspectives, any, any, uh, any thoughts? Well, some, some, Euro some European countries didn't uh, wait for us. I mean, the, you can access some data in a lot of different European countries. Now, it, doesn't, it depends what you mean by accessing the data. Everybody has his own governance, their own rules, what kind of data and so on. So it's very heterogeneous. So it's hard to, to just answer yes or no. But uh, of course, I guess we're the only uh, project with this uh, ambition. Uh, it's a very, very uh, ambitious project. And in that way, it is pretty unique in Europe. But uh, there are some countries that have some very well organized health databases and that are in some parts ahead of us uh, for accessing data. If you go to Finland, for instance, it's, it's easier to access data than the right now in France. We must say that. This is Laura. We'd love to have um, both all the speakers on um, their video right now. If we could for the Q&A, that would be great. Join, yeah, there we go, join Billy. Thank you, great. Maybe another question. Thank you very much, Professor Bakri. Another question, maybe, um, maybe for you, Sumit. Um, uh, practical experience uh, of the SNDS. Once you have been given access to the SNDS data, how do you technically link them to uh, an external registry? Uh, and maybe uh, on, the same, uh, on the same line, there were uh, several questions about the, 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 um, the um, the time from from a request submission of a request data request and data access uh, different questions can you address maybe the the logistic or uh, practical experience of using SNDS yeah Absol absolutely so uh, you know to to answer the question about you know timelines to to process the application uh, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll take that one first uh, the, uh, I mean, we we have we have been making applications to uh, you know to 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 access the SNDS uh, since since the since the law was passed, and we've seen a considerable uh, you know uh, uh, progress in 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 the in the application timelines reducing over time. So I should say the first applications that we made uh in in 2017 right after the law was was passed and uh, right after the uh the the database was made available uh you know they were they they took about 9 to 12 months to uh to 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 kind of uh, fructify into into a data release uh some applications that we have been making off late uh we have been we have been receiving uh approvals within 5 to 6 months so you know that that has been i mean almost half the the time uh, taken to uh, to access the databases is, is almost half and i i think you know uh, we we would we would probably uh, want to see much more progress there i know in terms of having the data available as of yesterday uh, but but i guess you know due to governance issues uh, it may not be possible to crunch it uh, crunch it you know to, to beyond a certain point dr bakri is that is that correct Yes, we are trying to reduce the, the timeline as much as possible, uh, as long as the governance is concerned. Uh, when you when you send the project to the hub, you have to pass so first the CESRES, which is a scientific and ethical committee. The CESRES has a, a session every month. So if your protocol is well written. If it's the first time you write a protocol, it's likely that you, you can have some rewriting to do, I must say. But if you are used to do it, then, then and if it passes, if it has a, a, a good uh, note after the CSRS, then it is passed one month later maximum to the CNIL. And the CNIL has two months once renewable to answer. So normally, normally you should answer in two months, but then if they are very busy, they can renew these two months delay, but just once. So there is a four month maximum delay for CNIL. Plus this one month, if your protocol is perfect, 
no need for writing. So normally today it should be five months is, is your protocol is perfect. And of course, if Neil, if Neil says yes, but then I'm sorry, yeah, there is a, and then you have to have the access to, to the actual data. And this is, uh, okay, this could take one more month, I guess, but we are trying to make it, uh, when the hub, when the decree of the hub will be published, we will have the SNDS uh, databases in the platform. It will be much faster in terms of getting access to the data. That will be very easy for us. Thank you. So we have a, a lot of questions. Uh, I'm trying to group them. So there are questions around um, content of the data in the current SNDS and in, in, in the next HDS. Basically the question around, okay, do, uh, does the data include uh, sick leave, uh, disability pension, uh, income data? Uh, what, uh, what are the, um, the um, uh, inpatient medication included, recorded in, in the SNDS? And uh, another question is how frequently are data refreshed in the SNDS database currently? And is there maybe any change in the future? That's for who? The first yeah. part, submit, maybe you can do it for the first yeah. part. <laughs> you can do it, yeah. If yeah, it's okay, it's... I can do it too, yeah, as you want. <laughs> but please. Yeah, no, uh, sorry, I, I, I missed the question, really, the first part. Yeah, the, basically, um, does the data include um, uh, sick leave, uh, income levels, and, um, and uh, immigration status? And, and second, um, uh, uh, what kind of in-hospital data, in-hospital drug treatment are, in, are captured in the SNDS? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, in terms of the in-hospital uh, treatments, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, treatments that are listed on, on the list on SU uh, will, be, will be captured within the database. Uh, all other treatments that are that are given as part of uh, you know usual care uh, may not be may not be captured. So list on su is 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 a list of, of drugs uh, that is that is published, and you know uh, as long as the drug is 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 on the list on su, it will be it will have a code and it will it will be seen on the database. And, and those those are typically uh, you know uh, the expensive drugs. So typically oncology drugs. No, uh, for critical uh, indications, they will be uh, on the list on C. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. And as far as things like sick leave are concerned, uh, uh, you know, there is, uh, 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 there, there is, there is no data of, of things like education or income uh, in on on the database. Uh, but you know, when when it comes to sick leave, uh, you know, this this data uh, we're still we're still exploring that. But Dr. Bakri, I'll I'll kind of leave that to you in case you you have insights into that. Sorry, I had the problem uh, going. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't find the, the window disappeared. So what was the question? I'm sorry then, because I was trying to get the window back. So the, the, the question was was around uh, uh, CCLIP data. So um, I think currently that there should be uh, in, in the uh, captured in the uh, in the uh, in the SNDS dat database. Um, but the, and the other the other question is is how how frequent uh, is the data refresh? Currently, is every year. It's yeah, it's complicated because it depends on the database. Yeah, we saw that during the COVID crisis, because during the COVID crisis we tried to get the the, the update uh, very quickly so that we could follow uh, the COVID uh, uh, sick uh, people, and uh, uh, the slowest in terms of update uh, database, the very slow database is the CPDC which is the, net, the, the cause of uh, death, okay? Why? Because basically there are only maybe, I think it's 25% of the, of the death certificate that are electronic. Otherwise it is paper. So it's a big mess and it can take more than a year to, to, to be uh, updated. Uh, the, the DCIR, so the reimbursement database, I think it's almost monthly that it can be uh, get. And the PMSI, uh, so that's the hospital database, we're trying to make a fast track. I mean, actually during the COVID-19, we did 
put up a fast track uh, in order to make it available after just uh, with just a one month delay. And now we are working on this fast track to make it stable. Uh, right now, I don't, uh, officially, I don't remember exactly what is the delay, but it should be three or four months, I guess, something like that. I'm not totally sure, but we, we try to make it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's CNAM, which is working on that, Caisse Nationale de France Maladie, uh, which is working a lot on uh, that, uh, along with the people in charge of PMSI. Okay. Um. Maybe a last question. Um, so, uh, how different is the SNDS from the other Nordics databases, like the Danish database? Um, Sumit, do you want to take the Yeah, I, I, I can take that. So, uh, you know, there, the, uh, there are there are similarities and there are differences. So I think there are there are a few questions uh, on the question board about uh, you know the comparison with databases such as the Danish database or, or uh, uh, you know Gepard in in in, uh, in Germany and so on. So there is a a uh, I mean it is it is similar and different in many ways. So from the point of view of the Danish database, I think it it comes very close to what the SNDS is. Uh, you know uh, the 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 only difference being that there are certain types of health resource use in in the Danish database that are captured as. Uh, you know, uh, as quality registers uh, within the quality registers, which which are not which which may not be national uh, and and you know uh, to that extent i think uh, there may be some differences but the other big difference that i see with uh, with the danish database is, is the size so you know in terms of size this is this is you know much larger uh, and, and similarly you know in, in terms of the the other databases such as you know the primary care databases such as gepard uh, you know the, these databases yes they can be potentially more comprehensive because they they contain prescription data uh, from from primary care as well uh, but again it's 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 a matter of size so 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 will so will i mean I, I i if i can if i can compare a similar database cprd linked to hes would be would be probably much more comprehensive but you know it 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 contains a very small, uh, not not a very small, but it contains a, a proportion of the UK population, uh, a, a smaller proportion of the UK population. It, it it is it is generalizable, yes. It is representative, yes. But when it comes to studying, you know, things such as rare diseases and outcomes, uh, we may have challenges. Last one. Have you have you? Uh... Is it possible to conduct a, um, post marketing safety studies in such, uh, such database? Uh, yeah. So, do you want me to take that, Billy? You can take it, yeah. Okay. So uh, as far as post marketing, uh, yeah, I mean there are, there have been there have been instances of of applications being made uh, to the health data hub for uh, for post marketing uh, for for post authorization safety studies. Uh, this it, you know the 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 it depends on on what what exactly is the study uh, trying to look at and and whether it can be studied using uh, you know using what is available within the database or does it need you know other linkages to registries and so on so it would depend on the specifics of the of the uh, study but uh, to answer the question yes there have been applications uh, for for post uh, post authorization safety studies uh, you know on the health data hub thank you samit i think we have reached the time so that there is there are a number of questions asking for uh, the slides so maybe uh, i will uh, hand over to um, to uh, Laura or... Uh... Hi, yes, thank you very much, um, Billy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, conclude this webinar and I will address the slide question as well. Um, 
I know we had a lot of good um, questions coming in, but we are at a good spot to end the web webinar. So please join me in thanking the presenters for their insight on the topic and the information they provided. An additional thank you to all the attendees for participating and submitting your questions. The full length webinar recording will be made in available on the ISPOR webinar series webpage in approximately two weeks. If you have further questions or questions that were not answered, please direct them to sally.cotar um, at sertara.com. And we thank you and wish you a great day.